All right, guys, what do we have here? Whoa, Dodge Ram 1500. What is going? Hey, Pinnastar, guys. 3.6. Guys, look at all this room. Do y'all see all this? That is enough room for one, two, three, four, five. V10? Anybody ever seen a V10 in a Dodge Ram? My point is, guys, that is so much room to put in. Uh, a bigger engine okay but um this year model i think there's two different options okay the 57 hemi and of course the 36 pentastar engine all right now you have the valve covers off i'm not sure what he's doing chasing the ticker yeah hey, y'all see that got the intake covered up <sighs> what is the difference between the intake being covered up and the heads not being covered up that was my point to my buddy that drilled me <laughs> He drilled me, guys. He drilled me about uh, a. <laughs> I was doing a 3.6 repair and uh, I didn't have the intake covered. Yes, I'm not belittling the importance of doing it. I'm just saying, if you're going to do that, you should also do the head. It's just as dangerous for something to fall in his head. In fact, it's even more dangerous for something to fall into the head than it is the intake. Sure, they both could potentially be catastrophic depending on what it is that falls in it, but. It's just as important, guys. So, you know, just uh, my thoughts on it. Like I said, I don't know what he's doing. If it was a ticker, I see spark plugs up there. So he might just, well, can't be a tune-up because you don't have to remove valve covers to do a tune-up. But I don't know. I'm just tripping over all of this room, guys. Plenty of room on a Dodge Ram 1500 uh, to add a bigger engine. Okay. Of course, the cam sensors. We all know each bank has a cam sensor, okay. Okay. Uh, these cam sensors give off codes that is not the cam sensor. In other words, the cam sensor is not the problem, guys. Keep in mind what the cam sensor is uh, reading. It's monitoring and reading the tone wheels on the actual camshaft. Okay, y'all see the cam, the tone wheel right there? Those are magnetically induced. Um, you can't drop those. Don't let magnet get beside it or anything. They are very sensitive, guys. Okay, so that's what the camshaft sensor reads so but every time you see a cam fault code doesn't mean cam sensors are shorted sure we're all going to replace it just because we see the code but in fact well he's marked these so i assume he's going to take the valve train off but uh these cam phasers can give off um uh, cam sensor faults okay so you just got to do your proper diagnosis guys all right yes 1500 uh all right guys let's go this way hey what we got here uh this whoa it's a whole complete differential assembly okay yes it's coming out of that lh model car now guys um that's a couple of things on this unit that's serviceable such as the seals i have replaced uh seals in this but if you got any kind of internal noise or anything going on like that this is right here uh yeah you're likely going to get a whole complete unit and they're not that bad at all, guys. Uh, of course, you know, it's held on by little bolts in the rear of the cradle, the subframe. Okay, so, yeah, we replace it as a unit. Uh, no backlash adjustments or anything like that. Of course, we're going to bolt the bushings down. Went in with the axle. It's going to come complete with seals. So, I guess all he has left to do now is to bolt up the drive shaft. But... Any kind of problem we have out of these differential units. And what's weird, guys, I, I took a course on this unit. Uh, we went through it, I think, if I'm not mistaken. We opened, we opened one up and went through it. I hope I'm saying that right. I can't remember, but I did. We went through the whole car, and differential was part of the car. So, of course, drain and a refill to do a diff service. But, yes, any problems out of this particular unit, guys... It's almost safe to uh, uh, to replace the unit. Replace it as a unit. Uh, Cost-wise, I'm not sure. It uh, looks like he went in with two different uh, new axles also. I'm not sure why. I'll get in his ear when he gets. It's a lot easier to replace these axles when you drop this as opposed to going through all this. So it depends on <laughs> your preference or what exactly you're doing. Okay. Now, there's no turning going on with these axles. So it's... Highly unlikely the boot will split or anything like that. So, 
Not sure what kind of problem you would have out of these axle in this rear wheel drive setup. All right. Yeah, so you're going to bolt all that back up. But interesting. We do not try and repair these units. Yeah, they come in a big old box. I've done, I've replaced a couple. I have, like I said, I went in and want to do a seal. No pinion seal. <laughs> Just the axle seals. All right, guys, let's go this way. Oh boy, here we go. Look what we got, y'all. <laughs> here we go again with this foolishness. Oh no. Oh no. Y'all know what this is. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the TCM. No, it's smack. Oh. Insurance company sent me this to go inside of this 300 I have over here. Oh no. Look at this. I want to do, sometimes I be wondering, do the customer know? I don't think the customer care. They just want their car to run and shift right. Now, they may have had an aftermarket warranty or something. So, at that point, it's the insurance call, insurance job call as to what we do. Of course, we're going to give them an estimate on a, a new transmission. That's what we do. We're interested in selling our transmission also. But uh, from time to time, I guess the price of a new unit will be extremely expensive so they choose to to send not sure what that means send one off of a previous car oh man look at this we definitely cannot use this so what I'm going to end up doing is uh taking the one off the old one and putting it on wow guys just by looking at it you can't tell if it's good or bad, I mean, it's just the outside of it. Cosmetic at this point, so you don't know what the internals are like, but I do know you. there's nothing you can do inside but a valve body, so uh, if that was working, if the transmission was shifting on the car that it came out of, it should be shifting on the one that's going in. In fact, let's go over to the car. Good old 2.4 multi air engine. Yep. Equipped with a nine speed transmission. They're the TCM right there. And those are a pain to do uh, independently or do on the car. Oh my God. Matter of fact, the video I did on that, I haven't even done finished editing yet. But uh, if you want to know how to replace them forever, whatever reason, I, I can't see DIY guys doing that because you almost 100% have to have a decent scan tool not the typical auto zone scan tool your scan tool have to be able to read that in the first place and my understanding the dealer scan tool may be the only one that it can initialize it after it's installed so i don't know but even i had a hard time i put replacement one time brand new i had a hard time bringing it marrying it to the car so y'all got to know if we have a hard time doing it what kind of trouble y'all might run into but i don't want to like be talking separation like that but um now uh what are we replacing in the first place it's just stop pulling guys let stop pulling now keep in mind there's no dipstick on here so i can't pull the dipstick and show you the fluid condition so the traditional way of pulling the dipstick out taking a look at the fluid and seeing if the fluid burnt dirty or you know discolored or anything like that uh you can't do on these transmissions but so, the saying goes from Chrysler, if it's not leaking or there isn't a leak, it's still full. And to that, to from that standpoint, I guess that's, you know, that's logical. It makes logical sense. But, man, guys, I really want to visually, I want to grab that fluid. I want to, you know, feel it, smell it, and I almost said taste it. But I want to. I want to meet the fluid. Hey, fluid, how you doing? I want to see what's going on with you, man. I don't want to have to go through all that just to verify what the fluid looks like and if it's low. Okay. Now, which brings up the question of why didn't y'all try to service it first? <laughs> Do y'all know what it entails to service uh, one of these nine-speed transmissions? Man, guys, I did a video. 
In fact, this video is actually done, edited, and uploaded. I'm going to put it right here. Go watch that video. Okay, I'll give a little bit of it away now. But in order to properly do a transmission service, that's if your definition of service is replacing the fluid, the filter, uh, dropping the pan, replacing the fluid and the filter. Okay, now, yes, the pan will have to be dropped to gain access to the filter, so you will be, in essence, dropping the pan. Okay, here's what in that entails. In order to do a transmission service on these 9-speed transmission properly, number one, which is the most important one, which is the most deciding point, whether you're going to do it or not, is the transmission has to come out. That's right, guys. In order to do properly do a transmission service on the ZF front-wheel drive transmission, 9-speed transmission, the transmission will have to be removed. And that is simply to gain access to the transmission filter. Okay, in that video you just... Or you're going to go back and watch after you're done with this one, hopefully. You will see how dirty, how badly uh, saturated the magnet was on that filter. The magnet, is, the magnet sits atop of the filter, okay? But the transmission had to come out and the bell housing, housing has to be split. So you got to take parts off. You might as well overhaul it at that point. You're going to go that far just to gain access to the filter. Now, I had one lady that was adamant about us doing her transmission filter the right way. Obviously, somebody got in her ear and told her what a transmission service entails, okay? Because we tried to sell her a flush. Now, y'all know what a flush is. You're simply removing all the old fluid out and going back in with new fluid and additives, okay? But somebody got in her ear. She didn't want a flush. She want her new filter. I'm like, ma'am. Uh, do you really want to pay what you know to get that done? She pushed the issue, we gave her an estimate, it blew her out of the water. We never heard from her again. I guess she was under the impression well, the service on my such and such didn't cost me $300, not the ZF9 speed transmission. Okay, you have to split that case in order to gain access to the transmission field. I gotta go, guys. That's all I have, man. I got work to do. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all on the next video.